covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. These are all the covenant. In the Bible, God made a covenant with so many people. God made a covenant with the Adam, the first covenant God ever made when he created the first man, Adam, and Eve, you made a covenant with Adam, and Adam has to be abide with that covenant. When you break his covenant, God has to throw him out of the garden up ahead and God forsake him. But God promised him, God promised him there is a day is going to come, the seed of woman will bruise the Satan that has been destroyed there. So that's with the promise that ends that Adam's covenant. After that, you know, they all fall apart then, God has chosen the Noah and God made another covenant with uh, Noah. So Noah made a covenant with God. For that reason, God blessed them, saved the Noah, Noah family and all of the people destroyed in the flood. But Noah and his family, like eight people, has been saved on the ark, or, or, or boat, which God asked him to do. So 120 years of the long time preaching of gospel that the, the world is going to be destroyed, but those who prepare the uh, ark or boat or those who will come into the ark will be saved. That's a message. It's so simple. You know, they do not believe there's going to be judgment. They do not believe there's going to be destruction. Even the same thing is happening even now. Jesus said this world is going to be end with the fire. God is going to consume the world, world one day before that all the people need to believe in Jesus Christ. People do not believe that. There's going to be a fire rain on this world. People do not believe that. They only know is the only the water rain will come, but there's going to be a fire, fire rain too. There's going to be destruction. There's going to be, the whole world is going to be consumed with the fire, the Bible says. So we need to believe that we need to prepare and come to the ark. Now our ark is Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ, come unto him. You will be safe and secure when the judgment comes because once you believe in Jesus Christ, you already pass by the judgment because Jesus took the judgment upon him. It's no more upon you. He removed upon you when you come and believe him. He removed the judgment upon you. No more judgment upon you. When you believe in Jesus Christ, if you do not believe, you still the judgment upon you. But the covenant blessing is that, and then God made a covenant with Adam. He break it. Then God removed that. Then God moved to the Noah. God made a covenant with the Noah. Then his children break it. Then God chosen the Abraham. Then he made a covenant with Abraham. And, and, uh, and then God made a covenant with David. Then God finally made a covenant with his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago. Now God made a covenant with Christ, not with any individual people. He made a covenant with Christ. And we are all covenant with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, took, his, took the bread and the, and, the, and the wine. He said, this is my body broken for you. This is my blood that shed for you. And I make with you a new covenant. So now you became a covenant partner with Jesus Christ. Whatever the covenant says in the Old Testament to the Israelites, the same covenant will pass to you. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you will receive all kind of the blessing what God promised in the Old Testament. So number one blessing, according to the Exodus 2.24, God will answer them in the groaning time because of the covenant God made with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So that's a covenant helps you, God, to help you in the time of trouble. That's a number one. Number two covenant is in Exodus chapter 5, verse 4 says, can we listen to that word? Exodus, then, yes. Then the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people from their work? And verse 5, And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and he make them rest from their uh, burdens. So here, people are, after the Abraham time, people are moved to the Egypt, and in Joseph time, everybody, 470 people moved there, and uh, almost all they are there, like 430 years, maybe after another 60, 70 years, over 500 years later, God sent the Moses to bring them out of the Egypt. But there, God remembered the covenant that God made with Abraham that after you and your children will be slaves in the Egypt, but I still will bring them back after 430 years. That's a covenant God made with Abraham. So now God remembered that covenant and he's telling uh, according to the covenant that I made with now 
I will set my people out of the Egypt. That's a covenant. So what is the covenant blessing is that God will set you from, set you free from any bondages you have, any sickness you have, any troubles, burdens that is burdening you. God wanted to set you free today. If you can come into your covenant partner with Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the second blessing God tell them that God will bring them out of Egypt and take them into the canon and set them free from all the bondages, all the burdens. What are you bearing the burdens that you cannot take it, tolerate pain, suffering and troubles and, you know, and debts that you cannot pay and the banks that bothering you and so many troubles that you are going. My dear brother, sister, you are not alone. Jesus Christ is there. All you need to come, Lord, I believe in your covenant. Come and believe Jesus Christ and God will set you free today if you can believe in Jesus Christ. And the third blessing of the covenant is, it says in the Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 and 6 says about that. And uh, let me read that one. Come on, let us listen to that. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom or a prince and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Okay, now God has promised to the children of Israel, the promises because they made the covenant. Number one, God said, Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice and indeed keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth, earth is mine. God promised them they will be a peculiar people, they will be a special people, they will be a very, very special people than any other people in the world. Yes, that's the way God has chosen the Israelites. That's the way God has chosen the Israelites. They are peculiar people because the covenant, covenant made them peculiar people. And you will be a special, you will be my treasure. And ye shall be, ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and the holy nation. They are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So God spoke to them. So if you are a covenant person, you are a peculiar person. You are a royal priesthood. You are a kingdom of priests. And you are the holy nation. And you are the children of God. So that's the promise of God. If they, what that's a, makes a big difference if you are in a covenant person. So you are a special chosen people than any other people. God will make a big difference between the people that serve him, people not serve him. As God has chosen you to be the kingdom priest or the, or the, the priest, or the, the, the holy priest. And, and God has chosen you to believe Jesus Christ. Whosoever you are watching me, listening to me, please believe in Jesus Christ. Come into him, join with him in this covenant. covenant. So you will be a covenant partner with God Almighty through his son Jesus Christ, where God will make you a kings and priests. So this is the uh, third blessing. And the fourth blessing for the covenant is Exodus 31 and verse 15 says, 31 verse 15. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Okay, the sixth day, which is the Sabbath day, is the covenant for the God's people. Sixth day may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any works of the Sabbath day, they shall surely put into death. So on Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, in the Old Testament, it is a set apart for God to be a holy day, and they should not do their own job and own work in book of Isaiah 58, uh, it explains to that prophet Isaiah, says that's a very, very important day, that they cannot do their own job, they cannot, uh, Isaiah 58 and then, uh, okay, uh, verse uh, 13 and 14. If thou turn away from the food, from the Sabbath, from the doing thy pleasure on my holy day, 
The call of the Sabbath delight the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing thy own way, nor filling thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. So then thou shalt delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high place of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. So you cannot do your own things on Sabbath day, which is the seventh day. They have to give whole day unto the Lord and, and serve Him and communi communicate with Him, communion with Him, worship with Him, praise Him and glorify Him, sing unto Him. You know, only that day is set apart to glorify God, not for your own job to do. Even on Sabbath day, they even cannot cook. They have to prepare the food on the sixth day. Even when God gave the manna, God gave the manna, the, when the manna given, it's on first five day, it was every day the manna cannot be spoiled. If they keep it next day, there will be warm coming, so will spoil, then those people save extra, have the curse. So they cannot save for the next day because it's not going to be sustained, next day it's going to be spoiled. So first five days every day only, on that day only. On the sixth day manna, God said, and it will be sustained for the two days. And on Friday, which is sixth day, and Saturday, which is the seventh day, both days they can prepare. So on sixth day, they have to collect the manna and grind the manna and make the bread. And, and they have to eat for on sixth day and the seventh day. Seventh day cannot cook, but if they need... No, you, you understand how important is it the food is important or the worship is important. It is food is important. That's the reason on the seventh day, God don't allow the manna to fall on the ground because they don't need to pick up the manna on that day. It is on sixth day. So the worship is more important than eating the food. That's the reason on seventh day, no manna was fallen on the ground. So people need to recognize. People always running for the stomach, food, this and that, but you need to run for God first. Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. When you seek Him, and the, all these things shall be headed unto you. The number one is Jesus Christ. Number one is not, you know, people say, I don't have time to come to church. I don't have time. I have a overtime. I have a duty and over duty and all these people complaining they don't want to come to the church if you do not want to come to the church to worship the lord and you are not giving the important to god almighty and you only living on the world so god cannot care for you when you are groaning when you are time of the trouble when you need a help god cannot immediately come because you are not in a covenant you need to believe in jesus christ you need to believe you need to receive your forgiveness of your sin from christ and you need to be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the water. Where you make a covenant with God with your conscience. Where God will hear your groaning. God will hear your cry. God will raise up and help you uh, uh, to you. And, and, and on a Sabbath day is another day. So that's why the seventh day. But in the Old Testament, people give the seventh day unto the Lord. Which is the last day of the week. But in the New Testament, we do not give the... Last day, but we give the first day, which is the more important. Giving the first day or last day. Everything they give the firstborn. But they do not give the day as a first. But they give the last. But in the New Testament, that's why in the book of Acts, we see the apostles, they come together, worship the Lord on the first day of the week, which is on Sunday. That's why Sunday they chosen, because the Sunday, the first day, Jesus rose again from the dead. Total victory they received. That's our final enemy, death. And Jesus rose again on, sun, on Sunday and on the first day of the week, he rose again. He overcome the death, destruction, curse, sickness, pain, suffering, poverty, every trouble trial, every eternal destruction, you overcome already. And he gives you everything free now. All just you believe in Jesus Christ, this salvation comes you free, this blessing comes. So Sabbath day represents that the church need to be rest. So now the Sabbath day for the Old Testament people is okay, but the New Testament people who believe in Jesus Christ, it is not okay. For who believe in Jesus Christ, the Sabbath or day or festival or feast or full moon 
or whatever, these are all not important because if you are celebrated day, celebrate into, unto the Lord. But the, you are not for the day, day is for you. That's what my Jesus, my Bible says about that. So celebrate the day for Jesus Christ, but do not be you be for the day, day for you. And God bless you. And uh, actually, and let us turn our Bible to Hebrew chapter 4 and see in the New Testament, what really God is speaking about the Sabbath and Sabbath part the New Testament people. And let us turn uh, chapter 4, Hebrew chapter 4. And I'm going to read you, you know, you can read this is only 16 verses in the chapter uh, 4. Now let us read a few verses from 1 to maybe 5. Then uh, I can read continuously. Let okay. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have. Now, li listen here, verse 1. Listen here. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Rest is the Sabbath here. We have a promise to enter in, and of you should seem to come short of it. Now you come short of it, that rest, that Sabbath rest. But verse 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the words which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Okay, now, the same gospel of Jesus Christ, which you are hearing, the same gospel also preached unto the Jews and Israelites, but it, is, it did not profit to them because they do not believe it. Because... They have a mixed faith. What they heard it, they not purely received the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why they did not profit to them. But what about us? Verse 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest. Yes. Now we see that who we believe in Jesus Christ, we already enter into that rest. So you no need to be a celebrate separately on a Sabbath day if you believe in Jesus Christ. If you do not and you do whatever you do. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, we already enter into that Sabbath, enter into the rest. And then, As he has said, so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation, foundation of, of the, the world. world. This is the word disobedient people. God said those people, God said you will not enter into my rest because they are disobedient to God from very... From very beginning, from the foundation of the earth, what I promised unto them, they will not enter into that rest. <coughs> God said, even you can take it at a Sabbath day or you can take it that God promised to them, they will bring them back to the Canaan. But the six million people left the Egypt after 40 years of traveling into wilderness. Only the Joshua Caleb, only the two people who has been left the Egypt and entered. Yes, of course, their children, children entered, not the same people. All those people, because they are disobedient and do not believe, God, they are all dead on the wilderness. So God has to allow them to die on the wilderness because they do not believe and they do not obey. They cannot enter into the God's rest and God's promise. But those who believe in Jesus Christ, Bible here, just now we read, we already enter in His rest. Glory to God. That's a blessing when you receive Jesus Christ. Now listen verse 4. For He has spoken in a certain place of the seven days in this way. And God rests on the seventh day from all his works. Yes. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they too 